my handsome boy. Yeah, I love you. I love a girl. Yeah. Now, I saw this on a motivational speaker on TikTok, and if you've been following me for a while, you know I see a lot of these sweatshirts that I really like that are inspirational to me and I get on my computer and using my Cricut and some iron-on vinyl, I, I make the sweatshirt. And uh, the other day, well, no, it wasn't the other day. I've seen this inspirational speaker wear this sweatshirt for quite a few months. It's always resonated with me, but it was the other day that I decided, yeah, it's time to make it and wear it because I'm still here. It's been a couple of months since I've been on. And there's a newness to it. Something about sitting in front of the camera right now feels different. And I was asking myself the other night, When is it okay to start living it again? And that feels like something I shouldn't say. It feels that way because I don't want to make it seem like I wasn't living when Ray was here. But the purpose of my existence for 19 months was different than it had ever been before Ray was diagnosed. I wasn't sure if I should continue on with updates because Ray's gone. That, that part of the journey is over. And as I laid in bed, I asked myself, what was the purpose of my updates when I gave them? And the purpose was because I wanted to help people. I wanted people to not feel alone. I, I wanted people to know that whatever they were feeling or going through, that there were other people in the world that were going through it too. And maybe by sharing my truths in being transparent as much as I could be, it would help somebody. And it was then that I realized that my journey isn't over just because Ray passed. That there is an aftermath. And I think that there's an aftermath that people are left with that maybe they don't understand or they're conflicted about or they feel guilty about that causes confusion when they're grieving. And so as I sat there thinking, I, I came to the decision and the realization that I can still help people. And 
Helping people helps me to heal. I've always been that way, talking about what I'm feeling or writing helps me to heal and sift through whatever it is I'm going through or feeling. And so I figure that since I've got the platform here on YouTube that I have, that maybe just maybe I can help somebody who's going through the same thing I am. Or maybe I say something that somebody can relate to by just voicing what I'm going through. I don't, I don't know where the girls and I go from here. And, and that's something that Kayla, Allie, and I are going to have to figure out together. And, and I don't doubt that we will figure it out. I think that we will. I, I think it's going to take time. But there's a new normal for us. And what we all experienced with Ray, the three of us, there are three very different perspectives. There is my perspective being his mom, Kayla, who's 23, her perspective of being his older sister and friend. And then there's Allison, who's 13, being the younger sister and her perspective and how she's processing what happened. And, and I will say that all three of us are in therapy. I am not embarrassed to admit that or ashamed. Um, therapy started before Ray passed when we knew that there was nothing more that could be done for Ray and the anticipatory grieving set in. I knew at that point uh, it, it was imperative that Kayla and Allie were consistent with um, being in therapy with our therapist. I will start off by telling you that um, the day Ray passed, and, and this may sound silly, we didn't know that Ray was going to pass that day. We, we didn't know as I guess anybody would say, okay, Kelly, does anybody really know? But it, it looked like Ray had a few more days left in him, maybe a week, week and a half. And uh, we didn't know so much that I had taken Abiza to the groomer at eight in the morning and dropped him off. And it wasn't until I got home at 9 30 10 o'clock when um the psychosis and the and the delusions had set in that we found out that january 9th that day was probably going to be raised last day we were told that um it was only a matter of hours Up until the day we found out that there was nothing more that they could do for Ray, I did not ever really, I think, envision how the end was going to play out. No, I did. Or... I envisioned the end playing out that uh, I would wake up one morning to find that Ray had passed or in the middle of the night I would wake up to find out or see that Ray had passed and I didn't envision it the way it played out as traumatic 
as it was the weeks following up to his passing and the day that Ray passed. And the day that Ray passed, the five of us that were with him, that Ray wanted by his side, the day he passed were there. We were there all day. It was a hard day. And we were with Ray until his very last breath. You know, you hear people say that I was there for your very first breath and I was there for your last. I was there when Ray took his first breath. And I was there and watched him take his last. There are days where I cry all day and I go to bed with a headache and a stuffy nose and a hoarse voice from crying all day. And then there are days like today where I don't have any tears today. And if I'm being honest with you, that was kind of a day I was waiting for to be able to film this update. Because on the days that I cry, I have trouble getting out of bed. But it's different for Allie, Kayla and I. On a day like today, I'm okay, but this morning Allie wasn't. But yesterday Allie was. And when I was crying, Allie wasn't crying. But today, Allie was crying, and I wanted to cry with her, but I couldn't. And maybe tomorrow, Kayla's gonna cry, and Allie and I are gonna be fine. Not fine, but not as full of emotion as Kayla is. And so that's kinda where we're at right now. What I know is that the girls and I, we can't let this consume us for the rest of our lives. It has to be a right now thing. We need to have our moment and then we need to pick ourselves up and we need to start living again. And my therapist asked me, okay, Kelly, when, when are we gonna start living again? And she's holding me accountable. What, what does that look like and what date are we gonna aim for starting to incorporate a routine back into our life or a normal back into our life? And so I said, how about the 1st of February? It's the 2nd today and I will probably upload this either today or tomorrow, which is the 3rd. But I'm gonna give myself credit because I only went a day or two past the 1st. The odd thing for me that I wasn't expecting is when I do something like this and I start to live again or I start to incorporate some normality into my day again, the minimal amount that I do do, it is exhausting to me. It is physically and emotionally exhausting and it takes everything I have to just incorporate that minimal amount of normalcy that I just incorporated. And so I will tell you that after filming this, I can already feel myself feeling 
tapped out and exhausted. And I'm going to want to just be in my quiet place. Is that depression? I'm going to say it is. But I'm going to give myself grace. And I'm not going to be too hard on myself. Because I'm still here. I, I'm still here. And the girls and I are going to get through this. I don't like to end things um, on a bad note. So I know this is a bit of a long update and it wasn't my intention to go this long, but um, when Ray passed, the day that he passed, his nurse was here, the hospice nurse was here, and um, she said that the last thing to go is the hearing. And so she was talking to us about Ray, asking us questions about his birth, his childhood, his hobbies, um, how he became a deputy. And then at one point she had asked about the tattoos on Ray's arm. She wanted to know the significance of them. And uh, I had explained to her that uh, this tattoo here that this was a gift to me from Ray on one of my birthdays. So when he came to my house and said I, I got a tattoo and he uncovered it, it was this pocket watch. And the pocket watch, the time on it, because it's a clock, was set to my birthday. July 18th. The hour hand was on the 7 and the minute hand was on the 18. And the year the clock was established was my birth year, 1973. So the clock was July 18, 1973, time set to 718. Ray passed on January 9th. At 718 at night. Jeff had been asking him for a sign before he passed, asking Ray to please give us a sign that he was okay, that he wasn't in pain, that he was there with my mom and my sister when Ray passed at 718 and the nurse called his time of death. 718. Jeff started crying and he thanked Ray. And I looked up at Jeff and, and I s just kind of confused because I hadn't caught on to it. And Jeff said, Kelly, he gave us a sign. He gave us a sign that he's okay and he's not in pain. He's with your mom and your sister because he passed at 718, Kelly, the time on his arm on the watch. We cried with maybe, I guess, a sigh of relief knowing that Ray wasn't in pain anymore. And he had had the gentle journey that I hoped he had had and that he was with my mom and my sister. Before I go, I wanna say thank you to every single one of you subscribers who have stood by us through this journey, who have prayed for us, who have sent us your energy, your positive thoughts, your strength. We felt it and we continue to feel it. And we get constant reminders from each and every one of you when we see a comment on YouTube that you're still thinking of us. I thank you all for all of the financial support that you have given to us, whether it was here on YouTube through the super thanks or a card that you sent us in the mail. You have allowed us and given us the time that we've needed to just be. 
and I cannot thank you enough and let you know how very much we appreciate you and how much it means that each and every one of you were there for us and that you helped us when we needed the help that we needed. Until next time.